Bulgarian folk tales. Martin and the Cursed Princess. Once upon a time, there was a poor man who had three sons. The youngest son's name was Martin. When the boys grew up, their father turned to them and said, Well, boys, you've had enough to eat at home, and now you're old enough and strong enough to work. One year from now, I want you each to return home with a suit of clothes. Off you go, and may God bless you all. The boys did as they were told and they started their journey. After a while they reached a huge old tree. At this point the road forked into three directions. The boys said goodbye to each other and each of them started walking down a different path. As Martin walked along he reached a forest. A huge warty frog was approaching him and spoke to Martin. I know you're looking for a job. Come on, work for me and you won't be sorry. All you have to do is chop and saw some wood. Plus, put me to bed in the evenings and raise me out of bed in the mornings. Well, what do you say? I'm your man. Wherever I have to work, it's all the same. So he shook the frog's hand and stayed. A whole year passed by. The frog was not a bad employer at all. On the last day it said, Well, Martin, you've done a good job. Your brothers are taking their new clothes home. But never mind, just go into the pantry and pick whatever you like. Martin selected a nice suit of clothes and started on his return journey homewards. At the old tree, he met his brothers again. Well, who employed you, Martin? But as soon as Martin told that he was employed by a frog, the boys nearly fell over laughing. But when they saw his new suit of clothes, they all stopped laughing. They grew yellow with envy. After they got home, they stayed home for a while, but when spring came, their father once again spoke to them. Well, boys, it's time for you to be working again. But this time, tell your masters to pay you with wine. The boys did as they were told. When they got to the tree, they said goodbye again, and each went on his way. The frog was already there in the forest. Come and work for me, Martin. Your job will be as easy as it was the last time. Martin was already used to the frog, and he didn't mind working at all. When the new year was up, the frog told him, Hey, Martin, your brothers are already busy carrying their wine home. Never mind anything. Go, find a bottle and walk down into the cellar. Fill it up with the wine you like the best. So the year went by and the boys met once again at the crossroads. Both brothers were rolling a sizable barrel as they went. When they spotted Martin, they couldn't help laughing at him. Well, that frog master of yours is not a generous employer. All he ever gave you was this miserable little bottle. Martin didn't say anything. He rolled out the largest barrel and poured the wine into it. Maybe a smaller barrel will be more appropriate, they mocked at him. But it didn't last for long, because when they saw that the bottle was simply not running out of wine, they were so astonished that their eyes bulged out. Their amazement grew when they tasted it. They rested at home for a while, but then their father sent them off to work again. Now you have clothes and you have wine of your own and you are ready to get married. But you have to find a wife. The boys did like before and when they got to the fork in the road they said goodbye to each other once again. Martin went to see his frog and the two elder brothers went their own way, whatever it was. The frog told Martin, Well, Martin, this time it's not going to be as easy as before. This time you will have to chop and stack up three times as much wood as last year. When the year was over, the frog told Martin, You've done a good job again, but now you have to be very careful. Gather up my bed linen and take it to the top of that wood stack. 
then carry me up and place me on the top of the stack. Martin did as he was told and finally placed the frog on top of the pile of wood. Then he heard the frog call down from the top of the wood. All right, now go, find a broom, then set the wood stack on fire, and as soon as the wood catches fire, you will see frogs leaping towards the fire from all sides. You must sweep all of them up into the fire, but beware. Don't let any of them get away, because that would mean great trouble. Martin begged the frog to come down from the top of the pile, but the frog didn't listen. In the end, he had no choice he had to set fire to the stack of wood. There was a lot of panic and commotion. There were so many frogs, Martin could hardly sweep them all onto the fire. By nightfall, the fire burned down. The frogs were all lost, including Martin's frog master. Martin was very, very sad. He was still full of sorrow when he fell asleep. The next morning, when he opened his eyes, he saw a beautiful maiden standing next to his bed. Martin, thank you for saving me. I had to live as a frog with all my household until an honest lad came along and did everything as I told him. But now you have removed the curse. Martin's heart beat loudly when he saw her. The princess jumped into his arms and said, your brothers are going home with their wives. But don't you worry. Go down to the courtyard and bring the horses to the best carriage. By the time they get home, we'll be there before them. And so it happened. There was great astonishment and a lot of envy. But Martin was a good brother. He gave each of his brothers three sacks full of gold. Then he married the princess and went off to rule as a king. Maybe he could have found himself a better job, but he had no reason to complain, did he now?